Welcome to the Revenue Builders Podcast, a weekly show featuring B2B sales leaders and executives. Hosted by five-time CRO John McMahon and force management co-founder John Kaplan, the show goes behind the scenes with the people who have been there, done that, and seen the results. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe, rate, and review the show to help us reach more people. Revenue Builders is brought to you by Force Management. We help companies improve sales performance, executing the growth strategy at the point of sale. Find us at forcemanagement.com. Enjoy today's episode. Hello and welcome to the Revenue Builders Podcast. I'm John Kaplan here with five-time CRO and author of the best-selling book, The Qualified Sales Leader, John McMahon. Johnny, how are you? Doing great, Cap. Doing great this afternoon. Super excited about our guest. Yeah, brother. I am really, really excited to introduce uh, the guest to our audience. Um, Thomas Pepper Johnson is a five-time Super Bowl champion in the NFL as both a player and a coach. Uh, He began his incredible football career at Ohio State, where he was a four-year letterman, two-time captain, two-time defensive MVP, and an All-American. He was also inducted into the Ohio State Hall of Fame. His son, Deontay, went on to play for Ohio State as well. Pepper and Deontay are one of only three father and son combos that were captains at the Buckeyes. Pepper was the 51st pick in the 86 NFL draft by the New York Giants. He won two Super Bowls with the Giants and played on one of the most dominant defenses of all time from 86 to 92. He went on to play another six years with Cleveland, Detroit, and the Jets. Pepper played a total of 12 years in the NFL at a very high level. Not only was he a Super Bowl champion, He was also a Pro Bowl player, which is the highest honor you can receive as a player. During Pepper's NFL career, he played for some of the greatest coaches of all time, including Bill Parcells, Bill Pelichick, and Nick Saban. He began his 16-year NFL coaching career with the New England Patriots, where he won an additional three Super Bowls. Pepper also coached with the Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets. Johnny, I've known Pepper since we were kids. Um, I was trying to think about it today, Pep. It's probably, I think I probably first met you. You're a year younger than me. I think I probably first met you right before you're getting ready to go to Ohio State. Uh, we had a mutual mentor and friend uh, named Ron Grenadier. And Mr. G was an Ohio State alum and a small business owner in Detroit. And he had a massive impact on both of our lives. Um, I always accuse Mr. G of stealing one of the greatest athletes to ever come out of the city of Detroit away from my beloved Michigan. Uh, (laughs) May he rest in peace. Johnny, please say hello to my good friend and NFL legend, Pepper Johnson. Hey, Pepper, I've watched you play many of your games. It's an honor to have you join us today. Thank you. John, hey, (laughs) I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I don't know how the follow up after that that intro that was a pretty good (laughs) intro wasn't it dude (laughs) yeah but you 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 left out high school you you left out high school for a reason right no (laughs) i didn't know you back then tell me what were you all american in high school obviously yes sir Um, high school all american yeah um hold on one, one second you got some high school gear some high school sweat oh detroit mckenzie right yeah Look at that. Who else was on that team? Um, you played with some, didn't you play with some uh, in your four years? And you did play with some other NFL guys, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, Well, Kevin Brooks was the only other guy that actually um, made it to the NFL. First round draft pick for Dallas uh, yeah. Cowboys. Uh, but with Fred Caraway, he was all American um, at McKenzie. And then after me was uh, was Gilbert Brown and Jerome Bettis. Oh, that's oh, right. Uh, that's right. Yeah. That was that an is- incredible. That was an incredible high school. Hey, did you play with my buddy? Did you also play with Greg Dirty Johnson? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yep. You Moose. did, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. He was a teammate yeah, of mine at Bowling Green. That's right. 
Yeah. That's right. I don't he, know how he's the he only them. guy. He's the only guy. This was one of his. Uh, this was the type of high school I went to. Um, his one of his techniques that he got from another one of my teammates, uh, Maniac. Get a load of all these nicknames, <laughs> and um, he would. He would if he found a guy that was uh, kind of they kind of overmatched him, was a little um, bigger than him. Yeah, he would get some dirt out of the ground. Okay, that's where dirty take came from. Dirt and throw it in the guy's face before he go right. Okay, uh, maniac told him, "Hey, that was that was played out. You have to try this technique." So they started. Um, they would line up and they would spit in their hands. Oh boy. Hot, and then rub it on their face <laughs> and then line up right before the, you know, the ball was snapped or right before the count, hut, and then the guy is so like, what who is this? I'm like, I'm lining up in front of this guy is crazy. And they go knock the mess out of it. Yeah. Hey Pepper, have you ever seen um, was he drawing back then? Was dirty yes. drawing back then? Oh, I, so have. I have a painting. You can't see in back because uh, yeah. I have a background on. Do you have a? I have a beautiful painting he did of me and my parents at my last game. Awesome. Yeah, I, I have. I have one that he that he did. Um, he said symbolizes all of us. Awesome. And um, God, it's it's out in the hall. Like I, I don't. I, I, the book was easy to get. I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Pepper. Pepper, let's talk a little bit. Let's dig in. We'll start at Ohio State. Um, when when you were playing at Ohio State, I mean, Mr. Grenadier told me you were going to be great, but um, you know, when did you when did you really figure out that that you were really going to be something special? Did did it happen at Ohio State? Did it happen earlier than that? Never, it never did until after I stopped playing. I'm gonna tell wow. you, I, I really didn't realize. Um, the impact and the goals um, and, and, and making my, my, my name in the league while I was playing. I, I really didn't see myself um, in that form. I was so focused on doing my job and trying to win ball games as much as yeah. possible. So I, I never really, um, you know, I, I, you know, your friends are telling you how awesome you are and, and you know, you had a gr- good a good game and da-da-da-da-da. Some of them will keep it mild. <laughs> but I, I I never really, uh, um, like, realized that. I, I, I knew I, I was a guy that I could still say today, Kevin, that I never got put on my back. I never got ran over. Amazing. Um, yeah, and I and and not even I, by I, Christian Okoye, one of my favorite YouTube videos for yeah. our listeners. If you if you don't get it, you get a chance, go look at YouTube of the collision with Pepper and Christian Okoye on the goal line. It's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. It's, it, it, matter of fact, see that right there. Uh, there's a story behind that. I have a million stories. Um, there's a story <laughs> behind that. My teammate David Meggett. He was always, he knew this. He knew I pride myself on never getting, you know, from high school to college to, to Amazing. Go, never getting ran over. And or it's just knocked back. I'm sorry. I don't, not getting back, knocked back. So he was, so um, after the season was over with and Okoye was coming up the next year, uh, he talked so much mess during the off season about, Hey man, it's it's just it's going to be a whole different life for you after we play Kansas City, <laughs> and I was like, you don't have to worry about that, man. It is, uh, I'm coming out on top with this, right? And I I didn't have to say any more. Blah 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 blah. We lead up to the game, and I couldn't get a shot on him. I <laughs> I tackled him a couple of times before then, but I couldn't. It, it was other people was there and, and, or whatever. And yeah. I mean, it was a storybook, a storybook for me that it, it happened on the goal line. It was man to man. And it wasn't, you know, I, I know they try to give uh, Ed Reynolds a little credit on that. Yeah. But, uh, Ed was <laughs> taking on a blocker. I hit a Koye 
it dropped him to his knee in the end. I still was pushing on. So unbelievable. So 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 Pepper, you had you were a um an all American at Ohio State. Um you're a two time defensive MVP. You led her for four years. Describe your mindset a little bit as you're preparing yourself. So obviously there somebody's telling you. I know Mr. Grenadier was telling you you're going to the league, but you started to think about the next level. How did you start preparing yourself? You're in a league now. You're in college. You probably are realizing that you're going to play in the NFL. How did you prepare yourself for your future in the NFL while you were still in college? Does that make sense? Yeah, well, um, like you said, Mr. G did a good job of, of humbling me, well, keeping me humble. Um, when, you know, when we worked for him, it was, uh, he, he was like, hey, this is, this is a good job. He got me a summer job that I was yeah. doing uh, construction and uh, carrying that jackhammer around. And he yeah. said, hey, it pays well and all this stuff. He said, but you can do that for the rest of your life or you can get your grades and you can have opportunity uh, to play in the NFL like your dream. So um, I got the, got the grades and everything. So come, going from before I got drafted, um, I didn't have the slightest idea if I was going to get drafted. Um, he had me come over the house. I guess he heard a few things about, you know, I was going to be um, in the top the, the first day of, of, of the draft. Yeah. And I, I, I was scared of that, I, you know, and I always said, I, I'm not going to have a draft party or anything like that. It that has to be embarrassing for the guys that don't get drafted. And um, they, they actually, you know, when they, they actually said another guy's name, Alonzo Johnson. Oh, that's who right. Was my, mm -hmm my uh, roommate at the combine in Louisiana, right? Um, to the Philadelphia Eagles. And then <laughs> these, these guys went on commercial break and they just, so it was just Johnson. So here I am thinking, I'm, I'm getting ready to become, uh, you know, stay Keith Byers roommate because Keith was the first round draft pick to Philadelphia. Now yeah. Philly didn't pick me, but we didn't hear the first name. I mean, the, so we were sitting around, we sitting around, uh, and we were at Mr. G's house, and then it, it, it came back from commercial break and said, Alonzo Johnson, uh, I was so sick, I was so hurt. So uh, G knew that, he felt the, my emotions kind of going down. So we went out to dinner. I got drafted. <laughs> on the drive going out to the restaurant. That's amazing. And, and that's when they picked, my, they picked me 51. And I, you know, still the, the story of Pepper Johnson, I wanted number 51 because I was a 51st player picked. And they was like, no, somebody else already had his number. And, well, wait, uh, I thought I that somebody asked 51. you to pay him money for the number 51. Ask me to pay I heard. money. <laughs> <laughs> And then Robbie, Robbie was least, um, he was kind of mild with his. He, he asked for um, uh, 40000 I think he asked for 40000 right? Um, when I went to Cleveland, and, and I, had to, I had to wear a 53 for a year, this guy wanted 250000 or, or 400000 I think it was something crazy like that. Yeah. Um, I was like, man, you got to keep that number. <laughs> and uh, Belichick being uh, a Pepper Johnson supporter, he got rid of that guy the next year. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the jersey the right way. Yeah, you got the jersey the right way. I want to go no, back no, to – No hassle. I want to go back to Ohio State. You were team captain in both the junior year and your senior year. Yes. When it was your junior year, you must have had a number of seniors that thought that they should have been the captain, right? And now you're in the locker room. You have to earn your leadership. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, some of the lessons learned then? You know what? Um, now this is going to be – this might sound like my ego uh, a little bit on this one, but 
Go oh, ahead, yeah, dude. You're the most the humble game. NFL player I've ever met. So go ahead. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't gonna. If anyone questioned that, they they didn't come to me and and say it because hmm. we we literally uh, voted, and that was one thing that I liked about Earl uh, Coach Bruce is okay. that uh, he took the votes and they 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 counted everything right there. It wasn't like you know, took your took the players voted votes and they go away and come back the next day where they can discuss if they wanted to pick someone as a captain or not. No, um, they they allowed the players to pick the the captains, and uh, I was yeah. I was that guy. So fortunately, what were you I, I what were you guy. looking for in that vote, Pepper? When when you had to vote for a captain, especially at a program like Ohio State, and all my Ohio State friends out there laughing at me because I, it's the only time I'll ever say the, the team Ohio State out of respect for my my brother here, Pepper. But, um, you know, the story, uh, the, just the huge names that have come out of that program. When you were voting, what what were some of the attributes that you were looking for from uh, from a leadership perspective back in college? And then we'll follow that theme all the way through. Johnny, I think that's where you were going. Yeah, that's so, where I was so going. Pat, I'd like to yeah, talk yeah. a little bit about leadership in the locker room and what you had to learn there. Yeah, well, the guys that I look for look for was the guys that did it on the field, uh, like you said, in the locker room and off the field that had a concern of mine mm. and not just guys, you know, not, not the defensive guy. Um, he's just a defensive captain and he only have a relationship with the defensive players. But this guy was a team guy that he was going to put the team um, first. And I am a strong believer that, um, captains leaders are born and and raised and um i believe in i don't i don't think just because you're the quarterback of the team or you're the signal caller that that means you should be um the captain uh, there's there's plenty of times when um i've been the captain but i i didn't call signals i don't know <laughs> if it's appropriate to say this, but yeah. I was too, you know, I, I, I was a jaw jacker. So if it was somebody on the other team that I, uh, we were going at it back and forth, uh, like when, especially with the giants, um, Diasi would take over and he would call the signals and get the signals. Cause I, I couldn't, I couldn't do both. So you were talking trash too much. You're talking too much trash. trash. Yeah. I was, <laughs> Somebody over there was was going to get it, and I was telling them about it, so I couldn't focus on what hand signals Belichick was giving me um, and talk smack to this guy that was walking back to the other huddle. Johnny, but, follow um, that follow that theme all the way through, Johnny. Yeah, I will. Well, we could do it once we get into the um, NFL and then coaching, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so it was to me. Um, the guy had to breathe it. Um, the guy had to believe it um, 24-7, no matter when you caught him. Um, uh, unfortunately, hey, we, we, it was, it's college, so hopefully this is not a bad thing. But you, you go out, um, and it was High Street at, in, in Columbus, Ohio, you go out and you have a couple of beers or whatever, and is that guy the one that's drunk and you have to – help him out of the bar or yeah. is he that guy that maintained his situation and he helped the rest of his teammates uh, um, out of the bar. And yeah. so no one would get in trouble. And I'm here to say, I, you know, cause it's, it's all said and done now, no one got in trouble on my watch. You know, awesome. <laughs> we, awesome. had a, we had a, a good thing going. So um, I, I would police them and Make my threats of getting guys in headlocks because we didn't want to lose anybody um, because of something, you know, it's it's going to be yeah. there. Yeah, but you put team first. And how did you handle 
some people that might have been me first and not team first. Could you talk those guys into bending to be team first and yes. realize well, we, their wrong in, ways? In, in, and I'm, I can't sit up here and say no one ever lied to me because some of the guys did try to get away with it. Mm-hmm. But I, I think my, my personality um, helped me a lot because I made those guys feel guilty. Um, and I made them feel like they kind of let all of us down in the, in the, uh, the few confrontations that I did have, uh, one-on-one after, after explaining themselves to themselves is that, um, Hey, hey, the, the support that I got from the other guys that was around, Yeah, Uh, I I didn't, I didn't try to chest. I I wasn't that guy to try to chastise you one-on-one, um, it was whatever the situation was. If if it was if it was one on one, I I didn't back down. Or if we it was in a room full of all of us, uh, you know, I it, it may not be appropriate, but I I had to do it. We had guys that um, well well. Let me put it this way: what I tried to do, I I wanted to be more proactive. I I tried to get things um, before it would happen. Mm -hmm. So we had ball games, big ball games that was coming up. And um, I would ask Coach Bruce, let me address the, let me address the team. Just give me a little player only um, time. Or I did it myself in the locker room if enough, enough of us was around. Hey, we're going into this ball game. Um, full tilt. I, we don't need any antics from anybody. Um, pre, we want to we want to go into this bad bad boy full cylinders, especially after our junior year um, in the in the Rose Bowl. Well, my junior year in the Rose Bowl, that uh, Coach Bruce left so many guys back. I, I think it was from starters and backups. He he didn't bring on the plane. It was like 13 guys. Wow. And then yeah. offensively and defensively. And then he sent back another seven or eight when we got out to California just because guys testing um, positive um, for the drug tests or whatever. Mm. And uh, I, I, I was hurt then because um, it, 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 it was – that was ridiculous um, to me. I wish we could have had another punishment, but we didn't. And we go out there, and, and that's the only bowl game I lost in in my four years at Ohio State. That was the only uh, game. I, I, yeah. I, we were under man. So uh, that next year, um, I, I, I tightened up the ship. <laughs> even there was more. hell to pay the next year. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, you're not getting ready yeah. to do this uh, my senior year. I, uh, very unfortunate um, that happened our junior year. And it was a lot of young guys. Was like, we played a lot of young guys. We had some, some seniors leave uh, my sophomore year. Um, a lot of good seniors. So we had a lot of young guys. And it was uh, – they, they didn't quite know yeah. Pepper Johnson yet. <laughs> right, so, right, right. Um, so, 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 Pepper, then, you – sorry, Johnny. No, I was going to say, so now, Pepper, let's go back. Now you're the uh, 51st pick in the yeah. NFL draft. You show up as a rookie to really an ultra-talented defense stacked with Hall of Fame-type players, you know, Harry Carson's, LT, Carl Banks, those types of guys. Someone tries to get you to pay for your jersey. And then Coach Parcells tells you, you rookies, and I'm not sure I need any of you guys. <laughs> so tell us about learning how to get your head straight and then what you learned about leadership in that locker room. Well, I, I, that, that was a whole different piece. They, it was Harry Carson and George Martin um, yeah. took mm. – um, that authority, leadership to a whole nother level that I, I didn't even fathom. We, we weren't allowed to, you hear me say that, weren't allowed <laughs> um, to watch 
ESPN. We 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 didn't we couldn't watch sports shows. We weren't allowed to bring newspapers into the locker room. Um, Harry and George said that was propaganda, and they didn't want us to read into anything. It's it's what we do. We make the news, and so let other people read about it. And no one dared to question those two guys. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, you mentioned Lawrence Taylor. You mentioned Carl Banks, um, Phil Sims, uh, Bavaro, Maurice Carthon. All these guys were great, uh, were leaders in their own way. Yeah. And that's what you just, when Parcells told us he didn't need any of us, it was carry on weight. The message was, was carry on weight. And uh, and follow these guys, you know, just take a take, watch what they do and try, just try to stay close and try to stay up as much as possible. And that that was my my deal that I I watched those guys. I tried not to let them see my jaw drop that I was at awe um, of how they carried themselves every day the respect that they had in the locker room and no one questioned it. And how do, when it's my turn to be ready and how do I take the torch and how do I carry? Yes. And I, I needed to do it the same, you know, the same way and, and not falter, not go off script of what these guys, the foundation, what they already laid. So uh, that's what made 90, um, Super Bowl 25 so uh, so pleasurable for me is because I felt like oh yeah I I know what Harry Carson felt you know what right. when he led us in, in 1986 mm -hmm. um, yes again it, it is a, a Taylor guy that's out there running around but he did it with uh, he did it sharp he didn't. He didn't do it um, in his character. You know, you you didn't want to pattern yourself um, off of LT. Not not in the <laughs> bad because everybody always talk about the the negative things um, yeah. of Lawrence. But I'm here to tell you guys and, and anybody that um, he is a, a much better teammate than what anyone thinks. Mm -hmm. And and for his elite status, he could have easily shrugged his shoulders at someone like myself or any of his other teammates, but he never once did. He he, he does, he's not that guy, um, and he, he he will help you more than anything else. So I tell people that, that was my ultimate teammate. Now. Yeah. Carl Banks listened to this podcast. <laughs> and William Roberts, but but Carl was Carl was like my big brother. He he knows that. He he understands that. I knew Carl from high school um, mm. when they're going to visit Michigan State. So he knows he takes a, another um, part in my life and in, in raising me. But uh, Lawrence was Lawrence was the ultimate. I did not see. Um, any of the stuff that that everybody talk about in the media, right. I, I even I tell my son that I, I I didn't see that. I I saw a guy that came to work every day, and after work was done, he raced home so that he could pick his kids up from school, or he could be there when his kids get off the bus, and he was cooking them dinner. That's that's the guy that I know. Yeah, and what a clutch was a, player he was. You, you couldn't tell the difference when he was out on the um, football field. And the guys like uh, like Lawrence Taylor, uh, Barry Sanders, you know, I had as uh, teammates, um, but I watched uh, uh, Randy Moss and I watched um, that that 12 guy, you know, yeah, he's in is. New England, he's over in Tampa. The Michigan guy, you know, the Michigan guy. The Brady guy, you know, because he's from that other school, so I forget his name. Right now. Yeah. But I, I watched these guys, and they are, they are, they, they do, you, if you, if he was here right now, if they was here right now, talk to you, you would never know they had that, uh, they was in that classification. 
right, uh, right. that status. They, that they're that elite um, athlete. They don't brag about it. No. You don't hear them talking about it. They let their um, their play and their performance uh, speak for itself. And those of us that actually that was blessed to to be close um, and and watch it grow, that um, it's 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 amazing. I, I you know, I'm practicing with Barry Sanders. I, I cannot. Um, I can't put it into words that it was, it was just so amazing watching him go about his business and taking care of what Barry Sanders could take care of, what, what he could control. And it was just amazing watching Tom Brady grow still in film at night. Um, Cause he was the show team quarterback and he was watching himself. And when the coaches, when we would go in to try to watch film, Brady would have the, the videotapes because it was on the VHS um, in another room. And now we have to find Brady to get the tapes or the disc or whatever and, and bring him back because uh, he's watching himself and trying to get better. And look where he got it. Pepper, I didn't one see of the things. Lawrence Taylor grow up, uh, but I saw, but Lawrence Taylor smacked me around enough. Um, that I understood um, how he grew up because he told me about it. He wasn't going to let me go in, in the wrong direction. So, One of the things that amazes me about your story, I've heard you speak on other podcasts and other interviews, is culture, cultures, um, strong cultures um, are impacted by strong leaders. And in this case, it's the leaders in the locker room. You're describing an environment where the veterans, the experienced uh, players, and in our world, the experienced um, business people are going intentionally to the inexperienced and showing them the way. And they're open and they're available. I hear so many stories when I talk to some new sellers, Johnny, sometimes I'm like, hey, you know, why don't you go find one of the, who's the top seller in the company? And why don't you go, oh, that person's unapproachable or that person is, you know, not available or that person isn't really at team meetings and team functions or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that that is one characteristic that, that you noticed of great cultures that you were a part of is that the, the senior talent was not only open, but they were purposeful of the way they, they sought out the younger talent. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, um, for sure. He, when you're, um, while you was explaining that, I'm like, well, Lawrence was grabbing me and, and Carl Banks was, they were grabbing me and making me um, come watch film. They showed me how to watch film, wow. how to, to study opponents and, and they cleared up what Coach Belichick was telling me, what an offense can do and what they can't do. Not mm -hmm. just look at their formations and, uh, you know, um, they, they, they have a heavy tendency of doing this and doing that. No, but when you're, when you're an elite group of guys, which our defense um, was, they're going to do some different stuff. Someone's going to try something um, differently. So they might show you this formation and run that against other teams, but they're going to run this, do this formation and try to run another play. It's on, it's on us being uh, not very knowledgeable of the game, what they can do and what they can't do and how their players match up with our players. When I see um, the backup tight end lined up over Carl Banks, um, and the run formation is all set up over there, like they're getting ready to run um, over Carl, uh, the chances are they're not getting ready to run over there because that's a smart coach over there on the other sideline, and he yeah. knows he's not getting ready to win that battle. So all of a sudden, uh, oh, Pepper Johnson gets a tackle for a loss. Pepper read that so well. Yeah, because yeah. of film study. Yeah. And I know they did not, they did not want to mess with Carl, so the running back is going to cut back. When I, uh, when I watched, um, what I talked about, you know, Coach, uh, I talked about Tom Brady. 
Um, that guy, Coach Belichick, exempt from the coaches coming and going. He he had a rule. He did not want um, uh, any of the coaches to be straggling coming into the building after players. So we would get to work an hour and a half, sometimes two hours before the first meeting, right? And he didn't want us leaving after, I mean, before the players. Right. And um, he exempt uh, Tom Brady, he excused us from Tom Brady because Brady was over there a couple of hours before. And mm. he definitely, who knows what time he was going to leave afterwards. So we didn't have to worry about his car. You can look at everybody else's car. And Brady wasn't just over there um, concerning himself, you know, just his situation in getting treatment or whatever. Nine times out of 10, he was over there with another uh, receiver or uh, they're going over some stuff that he wanted to make sure he was on the same page with his offense and it would be with the offensive line. And it's not just the skill guys. And um, that's the dedication that that guy um, had. And it was, uh, it was second nature to me. I thought everybody did it because Phil Sims did this, you know, yeah. when I was growing up, um, coming into the league, you see, I was getting ready to reference growing up, <laughs> really was growing <laughs> up then. <laughs> um, when Hosteller took over, that's that's what, um, what he did. It's just um, Carl Banks, like I said, he spent extra time um, helping me watch film. And, and that hey, was, Pepper, that was what about that I grew up with? What about some of the characteristics of? So we're talking about the greats. You're talking about Barry Sanders. You're talking about Brady. You're talking about um, Banks and LT, and now. What were some common character traits of players you observed that had the talent but didn't make it in the NFL? Mm -hmm. So they had all the talent in the world, yeah. but they didn't make it. Were there some common characteristics or traits? Yes. Um, distractions. Those were the guys that allow distractions, whether it was on the football field or it was off the football field, allowed them to uh, not really perform the way that they should have been performing. Uh, some guys that, some teammates, you know, I don't want to name names, but some teammates that I've had going even back to, to high school that I thought really had the talent um, to, to go to college and – could play in the league because I've, I've seen guys in the league with lesser talent. But when you, I have a conversation with those guys that made it in the league, um, a little more dedication was there. The guys that didn't make it into the league, um, some guys, you know, didn't even get the opportunity. Some guys, um, training camp. I just, you know, I, I met them and, and work with them in training camp, and, and they didn't make the cut. Those guys had other things outside um, the picture and the total focus of making um, the team and being, and, and being able to show um, the world or show the coaches their, their true talent uh, that they had. And then, and then when, when I became a coach, um, it answered a lot of those questions on some of the players that um, that I've witnessed, you know, coming up short, that as a coach, you, you do the evaluations and it's like it's something that you just you can't really pinpoint why that guy is not performing all the time the way that he should perform. And then that's when that coach Parcells come out of me. And I go and I talk to the player and the player has all kinds of stuff going on mm -hmm. um, in the back of his head that he's, he's not out there when he, when he laced up his shoes or when we are stretching right before practice, uh, everybody else is just, you know, ready to, to go into practice and, and work. And really he's not because he's worrying about 
who's watching the freaking dog, uh, uh, something, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, right. something personal. I'm, I'm tr- trying to be mild with it, talking yeah. about watching yeah. the dog, but it, it can be, you know, family issues or whatever. Yeah. Johnny, yeah. let's transition to, um, let's coaching. transition to coaching. Yeah. So dude, you played for some of the greatest coaches of all time, Parcells, Belichick and Saban. <clears throat> and when I was talking to you before this interview, you were telling me some really cool stuff about the differences between the three. All three of them are great, but yeah. the differences between the three, would you mind just sharing with our listeners what what are your biggest takeaways from those three greats? And then any other greats, any other great coaches that you played for? Exactly. Well, um, Parcells is a character. Parcells is that guy that um, uh, he's he, he falls into the category of a player's coach, mm. but you you have to watch that because um, he's not gonna you know he'll smile at you, but he'll throw the dagger at you <laughs> as mm. soon as you you know you walk through the wrong door. Um, Parcells wanted to trade me. It was actually, he actually wanted to trade me in the, the 1990 um, draft. Wow. That was your best year, wasn't it? One of your best yeah, years. Yeah, it ended up being my best year. Wow. Um, because he was mad of my, um, how, where I took it of the contract that they did after my my first contract. Okay. That I was, I was, I was so upset about the whole situation, uh, not knowing how George Young and the Giants structured contracts. And um, I understand now, but I was 23, 24 years old. I wasn't trying to understand that. I, I knew I performed and I wanted to get paid like I was performing. So Parcells was like, hey, um, that guy, don't want, he, don't, he doesn't fit in. I don't care what type of talent he is. Um, let's get him out the door. Wow. Um, and I did not know this at the given time. I um, I ended up learning this afterwards, but uh, it spawned, you know, like you said, um, my, my best season stat-wise and all that stuff and recognition. But I, I thought I had a couple of other. But anyway, um, he... He didn't. He don't. He doesn't play. He he's not. He don't care who you are and um, the love affair, um, how long it's been or, or whatever. Um, that is his business. He care about his team, and if you're bringing down his team in any form of um, facet, then you must go, and I I must replace you because I owe this to the rest of my team. I've noticed that. Um, definitely um, with Belichick, um, the way he fuels uh, the Patriots. Um, one man is not bigger than the team. Right. And it doesn't matter um, who you are. Um, my uh, Randy Moss uh, story, he, Randy, Coach Belichick on a Wednesday, when he addressed the team, he said, we, we, uh, we're expecting – big snowstorm on Friday. Uh, it's going to start Thursday night, be Friday morning. So if you are, if you live a half an hour away, I suggest you uh, leave an hour and 15 minutes from your house to make it here on time. Cause you don't know the snow, other people driving, blah, 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 blah. He went through the whole um, scenario and uh, Friday morning, uh, nine o'clock meeting, whatever it was, uh, 9.01, Randy Moss was not there. He was just coming in on the freaking door at 9.02. And Belichick saw him when he walked in. And after the meeting, uh, Randy goes to his office. And when Randy came out of his office, if Randy makes a left, he comes into the building. Randy makes a right, 
He goes out the front door. Randy made a, a right. This was Friday, right before, uh, you know, that was that undefeated season and all that stuff like wow. that, all the way up to the last game. But um, Randy was, you know, it was hot. It was, it was like week 10, week 11 or something like that. Randy went out the door, um, couldn't practice. Show up that Saturday. Uh, it was a, you know, whether Bill was going to start him or not. That was still uh, a question. But he sent Randy Moss out the door. And now Randy comes in and that Sunday night, whenever we played, I think Randy caught like three touchdowns. <laughs> 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 you know, it, it stretched his record, uh, you know, but but that's that's Coach Belichick. And, and you said and you said Parcells. <laughs> You were telling me that still today, you were telling me that he still remembers your mother. He still remembers your family, your son. So he yeah. was he was personable. He was a little bit more personable, a little bit more intimate. But like you said, he didn't play. And then you described Belichick to me as I just I wrote down the parking lot yeah. and how he made everybody park in the same parking lot. Nobody was bigger than the team. Is that, that's what you're talking about. Everybody parked exactly. in the same parking lot. No doubt. Yeah. And, and, um, and that's, I'm sorry, I was taking a scenic route um, to that, but yeah, that, that's the difference between, um, you know, if I call C coach um, Parcells today, he would go on, he wouldn't even let me talk about how he's doing. Yeah. He would, he would start, uh, you know, just like you guys started off asking me about my mother um, how is my son doing? Um, he probably sneaking the wisecrack. Is he still making more money than you? <laughs> like that. And, um, uh, but Coach Belichick, it's it's firm. It's it's it it it, it, it never. Uh, but he has his license. Let me let me not totally put him in the um, in the tight collar um, category. That he really he helped me out. This year, my my golf tournament, um, I asked him just taking a shot in the dark for an autograph, and this guy not only did he give he autograph a hat, a football, he had a, he autographed two hats and two footballs, and he wrote all the Super Bowl championships and everything um, on the ball and on the hats. Uh, that that was huge. That that. Uh, that was big for for me, you know, and uh, we haven't seen each other in, in years. I'm actually going to see him uh, this weekend, but haven't seen him um, for years. And for him to uh, to come through and send that out right away, as soon as I I emailed him, um, shoot, probably the next week we we had the, awesome. the ball and hat out there in California. So that that was big for him. But um, now. You know, we, we touched on Parcells, we touched on Belichick. Now we talk about that that Saban guy. <laughs> now, Nick Saban, I would he he's a little bit of both of them. Yeah. He has, I won't say like Nick won't uh he will he will properly in his manner, his upbringing or whatever, uh, he would say, How's the family? Uh, that that's that's where he would go with it, um, but he's he's more Belichick as far as uh, the process, firm, yeah, firm and straight ahead, and Team you know press. like that. But he will sneak in a joke, and he definitely like to rearrange a couple of the old stories from how I know him as opposed to how he's telling them nowadays, but I, I, I don't, I, I love coach Saban still love him today because I have coached, I have ran across some of uh, the players from Alabama that he mentions me as the toughest, smartest, um, uh, respected by players. Uh, he has like a list of anybody he have ever coached. And that is huge because 
those guys at LSU, those guys in South Carolina, those guys at Michigan State, those guys, all those guys at Alabama that he has coached and uh, he still put me up on that pedestal. I'm, I'm like, I, I would never go to Alabama. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the story. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but he he puts me in in that category, and I I know because of how it all started. When I first got over to Cleveland, he called himself explaining to me how to reroute a receiver, and I and you got. I'm, I'm so sorry. I really thought he was talking to the other guys and he wasn't talking to me. So I'm, I'm listening, but I really wasn't watching. And he, I think he noticed it. He caught it and he was like, and Pep, so what you going to do? And I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm a, and my answer was, I'm telling you this, I'm not getting ready to line up off that guy. Like what you're saying, um, three yards and threes, you know, inches inside of him, whatever he was trying to explain to me, I was like, uh, that doesn't always work. If I line up like that, that guy's going to – I have to respect him. He's getting ready to figure out a way how to get away from how I lined up on him, so I'm going to change it up. And he said, yeah, you know, he was, he was kind of heated about it. And Coach Belichick just happened to be walking over while, while we were talking. And so when Nick – told Belichick the situation and thinking that Belichick was getting ready to, to crush me and get on me, pay, pay attention. No, 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 no. Um, Coach Belichick was like, Coach, he's going to be all right. <laughs> Nick was so hurt. He was so mad. So he started calling me names. I, now I'm the teacher's pet. Daddy's boy. You know, <laughs> he, he stopped calling me pep. Oh, this, that, and other. But I, our relationship just got stronger from mm. that. Our relationship just got stronger from that because there are plenty of times um, Coach Saban was given signals um, out of the game plan um, that, you know, we were, we had a game plan and he was giving signals that wasn't in the game plan. And hey, I, I called the defense and we, we, we ran it. And when I came back over to the sideline, he was like, hey, man, everybody was okay with that. I was like, yeah. But um, but Coach Belich, I mean, Coach Saban is, um, he's a, I would say he's, he's a teacher Mm. like, like Coach Belichick. He's, he's a teacher. And if, when those guys don't talk to you, that's when you have a problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's when they when they don't talk to that. If they not mention you in the meetings and all that stuff, that's a good thing. But when they don't want to talk to you, they they turn and they, mm. you know, uh, they can go left or they can keep straight ahead in the hallway and they turn left and they don't talk to you. That's, that's a bad when sign. It's a major problem with um, Saban and Belichick. Hey, Pepper. You- you now had, you know, multiple viewpoints of team leadership, locker room leadership. You know, you were a rookie player, a captain, a team leader, a coach. How important is it to have players that can hold the team or the locker room together when you're the coach, but you're not around? That That's, that's huge. And I think that's the reason why um, I end up, I, I didn't, I didn't have to go through, um, coaching college, coaching high school, college, or whatever, before I got my run in the NFL. Coach Belichick knew what type of uh, person I was um, in the locker room, that I wasn't, I'm not a follower, that I am that leader. So he brought me, and I think that's a qualification of my of my upbringing and what those guys taught me um, as a player, that – you also need to be that liaison that you need to be, you, you need that guy in the locker room that can help the players relate to what the coach is selling. Yes. Because if the, the coach is, if the coach is not getting buyers from, uh, from his players and they're not 
buying into the, the, the system and the concept or, or anything like that, then it doesn't matter what type of defensive scheme you have or what type of offensive scheme you have and concept you have. Um, the players don't want to do it or, or they, they're going at it half-heartedly that you're not going to have success. Right. And, um, and then, hey, you, you know, that guy, he's, he's not a good head coach. Uh, yeah, you, you, you have to have – you have to find that guy that can communicate and be that extension. That was something else that I, I'm quite sure, you know, Captain, we talked about this, that Parcells relayed to me um, that he wanted me to be an extension of him out there on the right. field. Right. And, and when I started coaching, I, that was one of the things that, that stood out in my head when I was talking to my players that, hey, man, if I, if I could do this all over again and, sh- and put on cliques and, and show you guys, I would, but I can't. So I want you guys to be an extension for me. Whatever I know up here, I need for you to understand and know it out there and be able to make the right decision. We can come up here, we can give you the ultimate game plan, but if you don't understand it and you can't get the other guys, your other teammates to understand it also, you're going to have a problem. See, the blessing that we had um, with the Giants is that uh, everybody was uh, uh, was knowledgeable football players. You know, they didn't yeah. want to – Either one of the bills. They didn't want to put anybody out there. They recruited guys. And they that, were team uh, first. They were team first. Excuse me. So Pepper. And they were team first, also team guys. Team first, yeah. They were not so, me guys. They were team first guys. Yeah. Exactly. So you so, you you had to. So that's what what made us work. That made that machine um click. And that's what so they Pepper, got going there. It's a now. blessing to work for and cr- to play for and work for to play for incredible coaches. Why don't you think about our audience, our audience experiences. We've got up and comers. We've got existing leaders. We've got leaders of leaders. I want you to talk just for a second on those people that are trying to figure out how to find their own leadership voice. And as I'm listening to your talk, I'm like, holy smokes, how hard that must have been. You're being led by Bill Parcells. You're being led by Bill Belichick, you're being led by Saban and and other great coaches. How do you find your own voice? Because you can't be, and you've probably seen guys do it wrong. You can't be Bill Parcells. You can't be Bill Bill Belichick. Just as other players are trying to figure out stuff, they can't be Pepper Johnson or what have you. How do you help people – what advice would you give people to be able to figure out how to find their own voice and find their own leadership voice? Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Yeah. 100. I, um, in doing so, I'm, I'm not asking, um, anyone to be someone else because I was not asked to, to be parcels. When I said being an extension, it's, um, Take this knowledge, but go be you. Um, you you have to do what what makes you comfortable. One of the things that that those guys liked about me is I asked why. That was that was my my number one question. Um, why do you want me to do it like this? Um, why do I have to do it this way? Um, Coach Belichick and our relationship was so so well. Um, it, we hit it off right away. Is because he he even told me that he was going to help me with uh, my problems, but he was going to give me instructions. So I took the instructions. I ran with it. The things that I could not do. Um, at the end of the season, he he told me this these was a problem. So um, you you didn't take on blockers with your left arm the same way you did with the right. Um, you let me tell it. I didn't come into the situation as much. But when he said that, so what did I do? I worked on the the left flipper. Uh, I think 
if um, in your world, if you're not comfortable, if you're not finding, um, you're not making it your own, then it's going to be hard for you uh, to be successful. And it's going to be, it, it was, it was hard for me to be successful when I played for the hometown team in Detroit, that mm. it was so, it was the, the instructions I was getting was so crazy not just because of the scheme. Everybody, you know, a lot of people was like, oh man, you come from, you know, Coach Belichick and Parcells scheme. That's why you couldn't play in that. No, no, no. Or, or oh man, oh, I forgot to add in Nick Saban's scheme. That's the reason why you could play. No, no. It didn't have rhyme or reason. It did not have rhyme or reason. I, I, I had a conversation with a, a media guy that was, that questioned me playing from sideline to sideline. He said he, he, there's no plays of me running fast to the sideline and making tackles. And I'm like, uh, okay, so this is letting me, allow me to, um, to understand that you don't know much about football. <laughs> I have <laughs> Lawrence Taylor on one side, Carol Banks, Carol Banks on the other side. Yeah. Why in the world should I run over there fast? Who's blocking those guys? Yeah. Now, when I see them, I see someone positioning themselves or they have someone over there that could slow them down a little bit, then guess what? Pepper is going to creep over there a little bit. <laughs> but the, uh, um, it, it, but you st you're still not going to get me to – to run past Lawrence Taylor because I think he's not going to do his job or run past yeah. Carl Banks because mm -hmm. I think he's not going to do his job. They're seeing the same thing I'm seeing, or I am going to scream it out, watch such and such. And those guys are going to adjust. Uh, and and when, you're, when you're trying to um, – to coach people and you're trying to, to be your, your best, then you want to be comfortable. You don't want to feel like um, uh, you're, you're, you have someone else's In your head. In yeah. Your, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. you have to make them your own. If you, if you don't make them your own, um, that you can just react to anything and, and you can adjust then you, you're going to have problems. I, when I, um, when I, matter of fact, we had a, people ask me about my playbook when I, you know, mess around these spring leagues and I didn't want to give these guys my playbook. <laughs> um, but I made a big deal about it, but I won't put anything in the playbook um, only but concepts. Um, the teaching, the coaching comes from myself and my coaches that uh, if you just look at that playbook, it's so vanilla, uh, you're not going to really know what, uh, how we're trying to attack you, uh, what the structure is. You have to, yeah, you can put together a few pieces, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. And that's, mm. I, I, again, I'm, I'm getting that from, the coaches that raised me, that brought me up in the league. Our, our playbook was one thing, but what was said and what was demonstrated and the reason why was, was told to me. And uh, I didn't have to take these. I didn't have to take that down in notes. Mm. Um, I, I understood because it was a question of mine. So I got one follow-up question on the coaches. Uh, and Johnny, thanks for being patient here. Um, the you also so not only did you play for great coaches and had great experiences, you also suffered through some bad coaches. <laughs> and we get a lot of comments, uh, Johnny and I on the show. We get a lot of comments from people that write in or whatever, and they're saying like, "Yeah, okay, that's great. You got great leaders like John McMahon out there, and you know, and and you know, great examples, but." What advice do you give people that are suffering through 
bad leaders and bad coaches because you still got to play. Like you still have to perform and it's your job. And do you have some advice out there for people that might be suffering through bad leadership? Yeah. And, and the first person I, I think of when you said that is Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders. Yeah. Oh, Barry wow. Sanders. Yes. Oh. And Barry Sanders, he, one day he walked across the locker room and came up to me uh, like a third grader and said, Pepper, how does it feel to be in a winning locker room? And then he sat down next to me and of uh, <laughs> the mushy side of Pep wanted to hug him first and, and, and you know, and, um, and then start talking. But I was, I, I, I understood because it's, it was that fight, which you, which you just brought out that question uh, for me. It was that fight of um, how do I, how do I keep my composure? How do I continue to, to be Pepper Johnson when there's so much wrong going on in this building. Mm. Um, there, and I understand there's, there's many ways or there might be a few ways of skinning a cat, but you, um, what you know in, in your experience, you, you have to, you, 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 it has to be broad enough where you understand that this is not the only way that you can accept other ways. So I found, I found my desire, my urge to continue to push through Barry. And I tried to relay that, that, that comfort for him. You can, you can come over here anytime. You can come across the locker room uh, anytime to come and talk to me. Um, uh, if you, you want to do dinner, if you want to have coffee before, I don't even drink coffee. Well, I didn't drink coffee then, but you want to have coffee before practice, um, we can. Um, I try to to open up, you know, he's not a very verbal person, he doesn't speak much, but I tried to have conversations with him as, as much as possible um, after that so that he at least feel someone there uh, feels his pain. Mm. But if I can continue to push, he can continue to push. We can find a couple of Herman Moore was, was also, we, uh, mm. we can get that guy in on, on this ship also. That will at least help coming to work every day. And maybe at some point in time, uh, we keep praying, that the Lord is going to send us somebody that's willing to still praying, still praying for the lions, still, still praying. praying for the lions. Um, God, it, it is just it, it, I know this is bad, but I have to say it. Um, they their problem is in is in the entire building. Yeah, they it's not coaching. Yeah. It's not the general manager. Um, it's not the ownership. It's the ownership, the general manager, the head coach, the the freaking equipment guy, the trainers. It was yeah. it was so bad in the entire building. It was it was crazy. People referencing other people as him. And not knowing the name, this I'm like this janitor works here and he's sweeping the floor every day. <laughs> right. Why shouldn't we know his name? Yeah, this lady is 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 helping out in the cafeteria. Why do we just say her? She's we we, we should know her name. Everybody should be. We should feel like a family because we see all these people every day it's in, and it's in the workplace. You have uh, someone that's, that's steering the elevator. Um, you should know that person's name. Uh, the host is at the front, at the front desk. You should know that person's name. Um, as many people, if you in, in a business where you have blue collar workers and you should know, like, like what we talked about, 
that what that's what I loved about working at Grenadier. He yeah. came out in the warehouse. Yeah. You saw the boss face. Yeah. That yeah. made that made me feel good about sweeping the floor. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember you ever sweeping the floor. We worked together, Johnny. I don't remember him sweeping the floor. I remember me sweeping the floor. I don't remember him sweeping the floor. <laughs> this is how stories, this is how bad stories get out. <laughs> this is how bad stories get out. I hey, I still got blisters on my head from. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was a good worker, though. Hey, Johnny. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of a recap, but before I do that, I want to make sure you've got everything up on the table. You want to get up on the table? Yeah, I did. I mean, we got so many, so much <laughs> great information out of Pepper. It's it's unbelievable. So fantastic. Let me just do a little summary. Yeah, let me just do a little rapid fire. You got it, brother. Okay, so let's just do a quick little summary here. Um, you, we were talking about um, leadership, and we talked about you know characteristics of leadership, and you translated them into on the field, in the locker room, and off the field, and those people that put the team first. And so for our listeners, on the field, in the locker room, and off the field, and putting the team first, we can all translate that into um, into our own worlds. You talked about Harry Carson's telling you, don't read the news. We make the news. Let other people read about it. So I, I love that. And probably, you know, Saban talks about the rat poison and, and uh, you know, people reading their own uh, press clippings. And I think that's really, really powerful. You said what Parcells was really telling you when you were new into an organization he said, carry your own weight first. And that translates to me in the business world. When I talk about people coming into cultures, I always give them the advice that says, be the same before you try to make yourself different. Be the same, learn the cultures, learn everything about that you can about that team, and then figure out how to make yourself different. I don't think people do that enough today. You talked about when you came off as an All-American, you go into this unbelievably stacked environment and you just said, you know, what a great opportunity to watch the greats and learn from them. So you watch the Lawrence Taylors, you watch the Harry Carsons, you watch the George Martins, you, you watched all of these Carl Banks and you and you figured out what what great was in the NFL and and that's where you took it from a baseline you also talked about humility <clears throat> and work ethic um, you talked about the people that didn't make it so that was people that did make it humility and work ethic gave great stories there and then the people that didn't make it was all around distractions not being focused lack of dedication and I kind of summarize that in my mind it's just like those people that have the ability to be present when you compete are normally the ones that compete at a very high level. Being present when you compete is, is, uh, was a very powerful takeaway for me. We got into Parcells, Belichick and Saban and some cool stories there. And you talked about the differences and you talked about, you know, the teaching aspects. You talked about nobody's bigger than the team. And you talked about being intimate with the players and, regardless of which coach you were talking about, those are three takeaways that any leader, all leaders need to have, uh, need to have their, their eyes on for sure. Um, leaders picking leaders. This was interesting for me as an extension of their own leadership, meaning can they lead with and for me when I'm not in the locker room? Not the pressure of putting somebody in the sense that, Pepper, I need you to be Bill Parcells in the locker room. I need you to be Belichick in the locker room. No, you know what we stand for. You know what our leadership principles are. I need you to take that and translate it into your own self as Pepper and bring that into the locker room. Johnny, I think this happens a lot with you. I'm just going to humble you a little bit. There's a lot of people out there that try to be John McMahon in our world. And I work for John McMahon and, it, you know, there's just it's you can't be John McMahon. There was only one John McMahon, but you can learn a lot from the John McMahons of the world. And then you can bring that into your own world and being comfortable in your own skin. 
advice for people out there that are suffering. I'm just going to make, I'm just going to put a name in my head and that's Barry Sanders. Like the dude is in the hall of fame. He oh. played for a suck team. Like, dude, I saw some, I saw some statistics, nothing against, um, nothing against the guy from Dallas. Uh, I can't remember his name now. Number 22. What's his name? Quick. Emmett. That, Emmett. Emmett Smith. Yeah. The uh, Johnny. Barry Sanders, on average, was getting hit two yards behind the line of scrimmage. And before and when they did all the film study of Emmett, yeah. he was getting hit two yards after the line of scrimmage. I've and I'm not bringing – He was such a super talent. I felt so – I'm not bringing anything that. down against uh, Emmett Thomas. But what I, what I would say Smith. is – Oh, sorry, Emmett Smith, sorry. I'm not bringing anything against Emmett Smith. But what I'm saying is you, you just nailed it for me advice for people that are suffering you know you said go look for others that are high achievers in that losing environment there's still other people that are probably high achievers go build you know relationships and and get your solidarity there and you still have responsibility to play at a very very high level and you will get recognized at the end of the day he didn't win a super bowl but he is acknowledged as one of the greatest and he's in the hall of fame um, we talked about uh, the uh, uh, extension means, I already talked about that, sorry, where you, you be yourself, be comfortable in your own skin, and then coaching of the playbook. Playbooks are great. Players are great. You put coaching, you put playbooks with coaches and players, and that really is where the magic happens. Johnny, what did I miss? Well, on that playbook, what Pepper really brought out is like, he was so intimate with the playbook, but not just the playbook, but the players on his team. So he knew that what Carl Banks was going to do in the example that he gave. So he knew he was dependent upon those guys to do their job and he was going to do his job. And they in turn were dependent upon him doing his job. The other thing is he didn't explicitly say this, but he, he's, he's curious because he was always saying that I had the need to understand. So I was always asking why, tell me why very curious. And that's, that's, that's great in any field to be very curious and understand the why. Love that. Johnny, I know you're going to do a wrap up here, Pepper. We're going to do a little rapid fire, but I also wanted to, I forgot to bring this up during, you're also involved with this, uh, by b1.com and i wanted you to be able to talk a little bit about that we'll put it in the show notes um uh, by b1 was founded in 2013 it is america's most trusted all natural transdermal uh vitamin patch provider by 1b has sold and distributed millions of patches worldwide focusing on enhancing wellness for everyone patches are 100 percent safe all natural effective and made in the usa uh Pepper, tell us a little bit about what that's all about and and um, and why you're affiliated with it. Yeah, and in in summary, with all that there, that's the um, the goodness of it all. Yeah. But I I think it's exceptional, and, and the reason why I got affiliated that we uh, the the uh, the owner Jerry he kind of modernized it. So the, the patches, um, you know, there are different variations of it that you can customize them. I have, you know, I'm pointing to my arm, um, that you can um, have it rep represent something that you um, support. Um, you, you can put QR codes on it. Yeah, so I saw they got like for deficiencies for like diabetes, um, just energy level for different symptoms that you have. They, there's different tweaking of the patches. Exactly. So it's 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 awesome in that aspect. And our sister patch is mosquitoes. <laughs> so for those guys that we were talking about Montana earlier, uh, only smoking and, and slapping bugs, we got mosquito patches that um, help in that aspect. But golf, I really, excuse me, golf, mosquito yeah, patches yeah, for golf. golf. Exactly. Yeah, yeah especially yeah. for me. When I'm over there in the woods all the time, <laughs> but yeah, but the, the, the patches is it's it's not like I'm that guy that's afraid to take aspirin. 
You know, yeah. everybody talks about, oh, you played football. I know you took Advils and all that. No, no, no. I, I was that guy that I was just, I'm afraid to take too many aspirin or anything like that. Um, and my son really, he really was killing me. He was like, how are you going to put some patches? I said, when I was, um, you know, passing them out to my players and letting them try it, they can't. They kept coming back to me for more patches, saying that they felt the energy, but it wasn't like a, a, a boost. Yeah. So there wasn't a big come down. So yeah. I decided one day, um, you know, the meetings, coaching the defensive line, and those meetings pretty much talk about the secondary, <laughs> the, the majority of the time. And so I uh, put the patch on. And normally, because of by, by, by nature, what I've done for so long, playing football, I was, uh, when you come in after practice, I, you, you start going, I start going down. Because that was yeah. the time that I would shower, go home, take a quick nap, and next thing you know, it's dinner time. Yeah. Um, but coaching, that's when you really go to work because you have yeah. to start evaluating the film, practice, make your corrections, and all that stuff. So um, I, I started putting on a patch, and I, I noticed that I am a, more awake. I'm, I'm alert. And granted, I was opening my mouth, making comments in the secondary, but I, 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 I was alert, and I didn't have to result to coffee or anything like that. And um, more and more, I, you know, I started telling more and more people about it, and they have fun with it. And, and guys, matter of fact, a few uh, actors, um, Ice Cube being one, that he said, you know, they a lot of um, on set guys would take uh, B12 shots yeah. in the beginning of the week just yeah. so that they could stay strong for the whole week. Um, you, I know guys that do transfusions of B12, like go to the doctor and get a transfusion of B12 for the week. So yeah, see, so this I'm, is simpler. I, I, I'm not big with, I can't, I'm bad with needles. <laughs> yeah, big, bad, <laughs> with, bad with needles. I don't like needles. So to just put that patch on and go about your day. I, 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 I love it, was it. Right up my alley. So, so this is by B U Y B one B as in boy dot com. We'll put a link to that in the end of the show notes. And um, I'm going to, I'm absolutely going to try it. I'm not a coffee drinker either. And, and uh, a sustained period of time lapse period of more energy is, uh, is something <laughs> right up my alley. Johnny, yeah. do uh, take us to a, um, okay, take us to I a want rant. you to take no, any go of ahead. That a bit, before you catch a fish. We didn't go ahead, Pepper. Uh, um, about BPE. Oh, sorry, I missed it. Energy. I didn't. I didn't talk about that um, earlier. I but it. sorry. Keep keep the keep the antennas and the ears out, and you guys can um, tell us up, about uh, BPE, dude. I, yeah, I tell missed us it. now. Yeah, it's breezy breezy point energy. Um, it's clean renewable um, energy. And you. um, you're you're socialist. Look at you. Yeah, your your brother is trying to help and be a part of. Uh, trying to change this crazy world that we have. So, um, yeah, you guys look into that. that it's, uh, it's it's great. It's, it's it's what taking me to Montana. So, oh, very. I was wondering about that, buddy. Okay, so Breezy Point Energy is it is it breezypoint.com, breezypointenergy.com, or how can we learn more about it? Yeah, well, you can uh, you can Google it, but I'm we'll I'm quite it. sure that is yeah. That's, we'll that's get a link. Easy. We'll get a link to both buy one, uh, excuse me, buy b1.com and breezy point energy. We'll get more information from you on that and put it in the, and put it in the show notes. Sorry about that. I forgot to mention that. Sorry about that. Johnny, do a rapid fire for us. Yeah. Pepper, we got a couple of rapid fire questions for you. What's your <laughs> ideal day off? <laughs> my ideal day off is with my family. Uh, with my family, anything. It, it can go anything. from movies yeah. um, to going for a ride in the car just to, you know, see what to do, what not to do, and the crazy people driving on the road yeah, out right. here in Florida. But, um, uh, yeah, it's just as long as I'm with family. But it can be a barbecue. It can um, 
playing dominoes. How about your favorite meal? My favorite meal. Pepperon no, cornflakes. No, not, not cornflakes anymore. Anymore. <laughs> um, any, any meal without bugs, without hair, um, in the food and some clean dishes. <laughs> I think that's a good meal for me. I'm 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 blessed. Um, I'm I'm partially allergic to seafood, so okay. uh, I can't just eat everything. I can only eat the lake fishes, but um, I'm I'm as you can see, I don't turn down too many meals. All right, there you we go. Good, How about dude. your favorite movie of all time? My favorite movie of all time. That now that's a difficult one because uh, I love movies, but I have to say life. I like it. And how about the best concert you ever been to? Best concert? That one these Charde. All right. All right. Dude, All that's right. back in the day, dude. What is that, 80s? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I actually got to see her in the 90s. It was the 90s, it was early 90s. Um, but yeah, I, I, I talking mess uh, uh, to a friend of mine so much that I love Charde and this, that, and other, and she messed around and got me, got us tickets to go see Sade. And and I'm such a klutz. I I go to the. I, I've never been to a concert just with a female vocalist and uh, like that. And I, you know, maybe the second song, you got all these guys going up to the freaking stage giving her roses, was was throwing roses up on the floor and, and handing them to her and all this stuff like that. And I'm like, why did I, that's why they were selling those roses <laughs> in the lobby. God, now I, I don't know if I should run back or buy some roses. I would have I would have grabbed all the ones that was left over and just carried them all up there and just threw it. But I, I, I felt bad. I didn't, I didn't get within touching distance of Chardé, uh, but it probably was a good thing that I did get that close. Sounds like it. You sound like a little bit of a stalker, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't want that side. I didn't want that side of me. That would have been part of the conversation. Hey, Pepper, we're not going to mention, <laughs> you, you know, you stalking Chardé, you know, back uh, in the early 90s. Uh, but awesome. Yeah, no, that, that's an well, easy one, Chardé. Well, Pepper, you know, Cap's going to close us out here, but one, I want to thank you not only for doing the podcast with us, but all the memories of watching you play. Thank you so much. Thank appreciate you, sir. it. Yeah, I, I appreciate hey. it. That's when it's all wrapped up. That's, that's what I played the game for to be respected and have people uh, honest, give me a, you know, opinion and say that um, I did something. Yeah. Cause Oh, he's dude. never, he never get. I've known him for 30 years, 25 years. He's never given me a compliment yet. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I, I think you're fortunate. Hey, Pep, before we go, I want to make sure we ask you about your favorite charity. I think you were doing some stuff with ALS and one of a teammate or something, or, or what, how about a favorite charity? Yeah, well, we're, um, you know, uh, St. Jude is up and running that, you know, we work with that, mm -hmm. but I, um, I'm, I'm trying to get established. It's going to be We the Willing Five Deuce. Instead we of, the um, Willing Five Deuce? Yes. And that's that's what we're Dukes in the process of, of getting that um, started right now. And um, like Cappy was saying that, uh, and then I'm so bad, I keep calling him Cappy. Right, I need to be dude. No problem, dude. No problem. No problem. Everybody just knows. Call late for, just don't call him late for dinner. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, um, uh, an old Buckeye teammate of mine, and it's just a real close friend, a real great guy. That uh, he passed away. Matter of fact, the day before my birthday, and um, uh, he was suffering six years, or he was living. Um, with uh, the last six years with ALS. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to say suffering because this guy, if you would have ran across him at that given time, uh, you would have never thought anything was wrong with him listening to him talk. Now, you mm -hmm. over the years, we saw um, parts of his body that he, he lost usage of, 
but um, he was always in the best of spirits and would, would, would pick me up and, you know, a family guy and all that stuff. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, another teammate, and which was his college roommate, wow, um, he has ALS. And I am like, wait a minute, this is this is hitting too close to home, and we need to we need to find out some things. And so, so you guys yeah, are starting up. We try you're to starting. Started. You're starting a foundation, and you're called. It's not set up yet. Or you're working to start it up, or yes, we're working it's... to we're working to start. It. It, it should be up in the next two weeks. Okay, so when we by the time this rolls, we'll have a link to our. Um, We'll have a link to it on our uh, show notes, and uh, we would just ask uh, listeners if you feel it in your heart at all um, to um, to to be able to donate um, if, with whatever you feel in your heart. So, Pepper, dude. Okay, so now I have to tell. I forgive you for not going to Michigan. Um, <laughs> I, I forgive you. Uh, thank you so much for. Um, for spending time with us, dude. It's just, uh, I remember when we were kids and if I said that, you know, I would in, ever envision this day where you would have the kind of career that you had and, and, um, I'd be in a position to be able to talk to you like this. I'm just thrilled. And I'm, I'm so, so grateful. I, I really, really thank you for being with us, buddy. Oh man. It's you tr trust me. It's my pleasure. It's my yeah. pleasure. Like you, you had to remind me that, uh, John, he, he, it was like Pepper, you know, we we really didn't see that much of each other, but with Grenadier, I, I felt like we we did. We grew up and grew out uh, with That's each amazing. other. He would tell me so much what you was doing and um, and everything, and I was like, Golly, I haven't seen him in five years. Oh, I haven't seen him, you know, and this that nothing. We haven't talked in a long time, but uh, I, I feel like you know, it was just yesterday. It was just and, yesterday. Um, You're aging way started. better than I am, brother. So I'll just, I'll just say that. <laughs> hey, man, thanks so much. Uh, best to you and your family. Continued success. And we really, really appreciate you. And for all those listening, thank you for listening to Revenue Builders. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Be sure to check us out at forcemanagement.com.